welcome to In the News for October 27, 2023. I am Brett Burney from AppsInLaw.com. This is Jeff Richardson from iPhone JD. Good morning, Brett. Good morning, Jeff. We want to say thank you to our sponsor. We'll talk a little bit about them in a few minutes here. Lit Software, who make some of the the, the best legal focused apps, even though I hate to kind of put them in a, in a pigeonhole of legal apps, but Trial Pad, Transcript Pad, you've probably heard of before. We will talk about them a little bit more in a moment because even more exciting, is uh, I don't even know which which one to start with, Jeff. I mean, you know, Taylor Swift, Taylor's version of 1989 came out. <laughs> you have a teenage daughter. I know that you know this just like I do. But that's not even the big news. The the Beatles might release a brand new song. I mean, hello. <laughs> not something <laughs> what that a I crazy got on my week. radar screen. Right. It's crazy. But it has a technology angle to it because yes, this would yes. not have even been possible um, but for technology. <laughs> Apparently in the uh, the 1990s, the 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 three Beatles that were remaining at the time were coming out with the Beatles anthology, which I actually got. In fact, I remember my wife gave it to me as a present yeah, because it had that, that one yes. new Beatles song on it, which was "Free right. as a Bird," which is a great song. But it was a song that they recorded because of some old tapes that John Lennon had recorded in the seventies that Yoko Ono was able to find. But there was another song right. on those tapes that the Beatles tried to make a song out of, and just the quality of the recording was just not good. There was a loud hum, and yeah. the, there was a single track with both the voice and the piano, so they couldn't separate them but you know you fast forward to today and uh peter jackson the guy that made lord of the rings and all those other movies oh, yeah. he oh, also yeah. did that that big beatles documentary that was so uh, wonderful which i right. guess was on D disney plus if i remember correctly it was really really good I think so yeah. but he was able to use his fancy technology to you know clean up that audio recording so you know some of the same technology that we often talk about as being you know Amazing. arguably controversial today on some of its uses yeah. but what a right. fantastic use and I, I love there was a quote in this article here from um john's son sean lennon uh that was yes. saying that you know yes. the way that peter jackson cleaned it up like this is absolutely my father's voice singing and he will he is just as much singing on the song as any of the other beatles so uh so anyway, it's sort of fun but who would have thought that we'd be getting a brand new Beatles song next week, <laughs> one week from today? <laughs> and I assume it's going to be available on Apple Music, I which, would hope as, so, as, yes. as you know, I mean, I just keep thinking back because I remember, you know, the Beatles were famously holding out. They were on Apple Records, right? Or Apple, mm -hmm. the Apple, which is so funny in that. And yeah, they were holdouts <laughs> from the iTunes store. I mean, just to see all of this come full circle is well, it was uh, actually, a little crazy. It's funny you mentioned that, Brett, because it was actually a big deal when the Beatles first came to the, right. Uh, what was that time? The iTunes store exactly. way back when. And I, I guess Steve Jobs was still around at the time, and they. Had a big he was. Yep. I even think it may oh, have yeah. actually been exclusive for a small period of time. So, uh, so here we are again. So, I will definitely be using my Apple Music a week from today to listen to the new Beatles song. But too funny. But wait, there's more. <laughs> a crazy week. All of a sudden, I see this email pop up. What was that? I think on Wednesday or maybe Thursday. Yeah. I can't remember exactly, Jeff. I'm like, wait a minute. Here's a here's an email from Apple that looks suspiciously like the emails they send when there's a special event plan. There ain't no special event plan. What is this? <laughs> there is a special event plan. There is indeed, at a weird yes. time and a weird angle on this. Here I've got the page pulled up, which has this Apple developing into the Mac Finder face. What in the world is going to be happening on Monday, Jeff? Well, the, the email that went around had the tagline, Spooky Fast. Spooky and Fast. The graphic that you are showing <laughs> off uh, has yes. the Apple changing to the Finder icon. So you put those two together, you know, the Mac Finder icon, Spooky Fast. You got to think that this is going to be the Apple <laughs> M3 chips, which were it's released in the iPhone. So like the brand new iPhone that you and I both have, the iPhone Pro, it has the iPhone version of the M3 chip, um, but the computer version of it, which is called the M3, uh, right. which I actually did not think that Apple was going to release until next year. My guess is that maybe it's going to be coming out uh, on, um, is this Monday night? Yeah, Monday night. Monday. So, okay. First of all, it's Monday, bizarre, which I guess I know it's, yeah, yeah it's they a, don't do Monday. It's in the nighttime. Often. Is it evening? Never, have they done this ever, Brett? I don't think that they've ever Not done that this I know before. of. Yeah. No. So why why did they decide? I mean, it's close to Halloween, so that makes it sort of spooky if it's nighttime. <laughs> but um, you know, maybe <laughs> Apple just figured let's let's do it and let's see. Maybe more people tune in if we do something after hours than during the day. True. Maybe it's just a test. I have no idea. But it's I mean, it is a I mean, we get Beatles songs, we get Apple events at night. <laughs> it is a crazy world out there. Taylor right? Swift. Who knows? <laughs> anything, anything is possible. Anything is no possible. No kidding. Wow. I mean, first of all, a couple of thoughts on this. I mean, the the fact that Apple does these now in 
uh, I guess, quote, virtual mode, right? It's just videos. I mean, they can right. release it at any time. So they have so much more they flexibility could, could. You're right. as opposed to inviting people, you know, to the Steve Jobs campus, you know, to, uh, on in, in person. And I know you've listened to other podcasts like I have that some people were suspecting that maybe, you know, five P, it's 5 p.m. Pacific, right? Which right. means that's 8 p.m. Eastern <laughs> in the United States. But it, it's like in the middle of the day or morning, like in China or Asia or India. Oh, like, I don't know true. all the time, but some people were talking about maybe this is Apple making a play for that. Or, you know, again, they don't have to do it at, a you know, yeah. a 10, 10 a.m. Pacific time, which they normally do. You can tell that time is embedded in my brain because that's typically when, when Apple has these announcements. But yeah, it, yeah. It'll, it'll be interesting. I mean, I mean, I, I just want to take like, you know, 10 seconds. Uh, new iPad, maybe? <laughs> Spooky this is the fast question. Apple Pencil, spooky because fast it, uh, AirPods. I mean, what what else could it be? If there was going to be an iPad announcement, which there could because they haven't had one yet this there year. Could. And, you know, yes. It seems like to go an entire year with no <laughs> iPad announcement. So uh -huh. if it wasn't for the fact that they released that new Apple Pencil two weeks ago, uh, because if they were right. going to have an iPad right. announcement, surely, surely, surely they would have held back the Apple Pencil announcement for another 10 days to this date. But the fact that they got that out of the door first makes me think, no, maybe this is going to just be all about the Macs. Right. And maybe maybe we'll be waiting next year for the new iPads as opposed to next year for the new Macs, which is what I just assumed. So, um, you know, I'll say yeah. one more thing. I had, uh, you Please. know. There's a rumor they're going to come out with a new iMac. Um, I have a little mixed. Right? This is a totally personal thing. I have a little uh -oh. mixed emotions. If that you can currently you get the 24 inch one. iMac, right? Yeah. So the thing is, <laughs> I was holding out for a 27 inch <laughs> iMac, and after a long time of yes. Apple not releasing it, I gave up. I'm like, okay, they don't want to make big screen iMacs right, anymore. Right. So instead, I, I bought a studio display that's 27 <laughs> inches and a separate Mac Mini to sort of make my own sort of iMac. Oh, and so oh, I have to admit, if they come out with a big screen yeah. iMac, you're like, oh, I could have just waited a couple more months. You, you could know, be now mad that I have it, week. again, I'm thrilled that I have the setup that I yeah, have. But yeah. um, who knows? So I'm going to be very curious to see what happens on Monday night. Bizarre. Something else that was fairly spooky fast was my update this morning <laughs> to my iPhone and my iPad. So iOS 17.1 and iPad OS 17.1 has come out. Now we, again, we've been talking about this. I'm kind of, you know, it's almost like these days, I'm not surprised <laughs> because Apple has been doing such a great job, I think, of doing developer betas and public betas and, you know, the stories and the blogs mm -hmm. that you and I follow. Most people are covering just about everything before it even comes out. And so there's nothing like that, that I feel like we have to discuss uh, other than, OK, did it work? Like, you know, now that it's in the actual public, yeah. you know, the actual public release, does it look as good as it was supposed to look? And you linked to Max Stories today. Frederico went through and I, I, I think he would agree that, yeah, it, 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 it looks pretty good. And and, and he he really goes goes into some of the details here about what's uh, what's nice and improved in seventeen point one. Yeah, we've got some things that we've been waiting for ever since iOS seventeen was first introduced right. to the world back in right. June. Things like this, you know, you can start an AirPlay transfer when you're close to each other, and then it can continue over cellular or over Wi-Fi when you move apart. And so that's going to be nice for transferring files. I mean, I would note just, you know, parenthetically, anytime that you want to send something to someone else's iPhone and you're close by, AirPlay mm -hmm. is the best way to go because you really get, yes. you, you get the full quality, the best quality. Yes. If you, I, I you know, I, I strongly encourage folks to take advantage of that versus texting it or emailing it or something like that. And it's now even better. There's a ton of improvements to Apple Music in here. I have haven't even gone through all of yeah. them. Yeah. But I mean, just to give you an example, you know, if you make a playlist for, I mean, gosh, ever back to the iPod days when you had a playlist, the album cover art for your playlist would just be like four little album covers, you know? Right. But exactly. now you can actually customize your playlist cover art. And I think the cover, I haven't tried this yet myself, but I think it can even like have colors that move or something like that. So I mean, yeah. it's a minor thing, but for, you know, kids that make playlists and share them, uh, you know, you can make some cooler, cooler playlists. So there's a lot of improvements to the music app. But there's um, but you know, lots of other improvements too. I talked about a standby improvement that if you yeah. have the 14 or 15 Pro, you know, the, the newest pro iPhones from this year and last year, they have the always on screen, which is incredibly useful for standby mode. But now you can actually control how long the screen stays on, which is nice to have a little more control over that. Um yeah. lots of little fiddly things. And you know, and it's not just it's the as you said, it's the iPad, 
It's the iPhone. The Apple yeah. Watch has a new operating system. So I don't have oh, it. Oh, really? If you, oh, if you yeah. were to have the brand new Apple Watch, you oh, know that new feature with the uh, double tap your fingers to make yes. the screen move? That has not been enabled until like yesterday when the updates oh. came out or, or Wednesday, whenever it was. So, okay. um, so anyway, so it's it's a nice update to sort of, you know, move things along and get some stuff implemented. And then, you know, as you pointed out, we have 17.1 out today and already Apple has a beta of 17.2. Exactly. So, exactly. Now we know what's coming next. And you linked to a story here where they were just talking about it's that the journal app, which, of course, I had forgotten about, even though they announced it at WWDC. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but I'm glad that you linked to uh, Chance Miller talk, writing about this in 9 to 5 Mac that like, oh, yeah, there's the journal app. And now that I see there was a picture from WWDC, they were talking about this. And that is not available yet, but it is supposedly coming out in 17.2. Yeah, and you and I talked last week, Brett, about the fact that point two is typically when they also add the new emoji updates to. So, yes. um, you know, who yes. knows? We're probably, I would guess, a month away from 17.2 being fully baked. But whenever yeah. it is, whenever it does come out, it's going to have some new features like the journal. And, and my guess is the new emoji, too. We'll find out. Yeah, I like this back going back to Frederico, uh, his story. He's like, I'll cut to the chase. These are not big updates in 17.1 <laughs> and they don't come with new emoji. <laughs> like he just knows that's what most people are going to be asking about. Yeah, and then yeah, just yeah. quickly, I, you know, you know that I'm a multi music app guy. Like I, I usually jump back and forth between uh, Apple, uh, Apple music and Spotify. And I got to tell you one thing he talks about here is that now in Apple music, and it, it was so confusing to me, Jeff, because if I liked a song, there was like a circle with the plus that I could tap it and then there was also a heart <laughs> and mm -hmm. I didn't know which one did which to add it to my playlist yeah. or add it to my favorite songs and now it looked you know in, in Spotify it was just one button and it was very simple and well now in Apple Music it looks like that they've kind of Spotified it a little bit <laughs> in the sense that you can just favorite it like it's just a star now as opposed to a plus and a heart uh, on there so I kind of like that they're they're doing some of that yeah, so they're no longer uh, and, calling it love a song. It's now right. favorite a song, which which is probably a, a, an improvement to terminology. Well, yeah. You know, that's a holdover from iTunes. I remember that. Like I used yeah. to have like, you know, was it it was maybe it was stars or hearts. Now I can't remember in iTunes, but I would go through and I would I would love to like peg a song if I liked it a lot, you know, put that in. And mm -hmm. the other thing quickly mm -hmm. I just wanted to uh, mention down here at the bottom in iPad OS, um, you know, on iMessages on the phone, if I wanted to do just a quick little thumbs up, I mean, they, uh, Apple calls this tap back, right? You can do a thumbs up or you can do a little heart emoji. It's not really an emoji. I mean, these are just little additional little tags that you can put on a message. So mm -hmm. like, you know, if my wife says, hey, I'll be home in a little bit, I don't have to like actually type okay or see you soon. I just tap right. and hold on that my iMessage and then it pops up and I can just put a thumbs up like, yes, got it. Well, in iPad OS, I can't remember if I had to tap and hold on the messages there, but it looks like Frederico was talking about, now you can do a two finger tap on a message and it comes up with a little context menu. Are you, are you trying it right now? <laughs> I am trying it right it's, now and I'm not getting it to the, work. Is the it, tap back reaction. I yeah, I have to see because in fact, let me let me do this right now on mine. On oh, interesting. See if I tap and hold on the iPad, it'll do it. I wonder if it makes a difference if I have to uh, go into full screen. No, yeah, interesting. I don't know. That's not working. Okay, but, you know t that, he this, says two fingers, right? Is that, you know, yeah, two finger click it. on a message. Oh, maybe it's on the trackpad. Let me try that on the trackpad. Yes, it oh, is. So you have to so have it's a trackpad. Okay, okay. Yeah, okay. and I have mine right here. And sure enough, if I tap with two fingers on the trackpad, not the screen, I can get that available uh, the ability to do a tap back. But hmm. I can tap and hold my finger on a message on uh, on this on the iMessages on the mm -hmm. iPad. <laughs> This is really getting a little too confusing, isn't yeah. it? <laughs> but, okay. while, while we're but down hey, this little... you know, I like to know that. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, while we're down this rabbit hole, you know, today in iOS 17.1, yes. when you have tap backs, you're still limited to those six different functions. You got the heart, you got thumbs yeah. up and thumbs down, you got the ha, -ha I know. The exclamation points and the question marks, but I think it's in seventeen point two. So the one that we that's you know just now yes. coming out of beta, probably out next month. I think that's going to be the one that you can use any. Um, emoji for a tap back Ooh. so if you wanted to have you know a, a silly clown and use that as yeah. a tap back or you right. know whatever you wanted to do but i, I Ooh, think I i'm like right that. about that so that that's a feature that we know is coming at some point in ios 17 not out yet not out today in 17.1 but i think i think it's coming in 17.2 that 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 even gets me more excited than 
more emoji. I mean, honestly, because <laughs> it's like I, I like the thumbs up and the heart, but I'm like, I want to add more. Like, yeah, I don't even care if options. Apple just add, mm -hmm. if, even if Apple just adds standard ones, you know, just add more options. I don't even care if I have to do my own emoji, although that would be fun. But, mm -hmm. I, you know, I know you use uh, Teams quite a bit and I use both Slack and Teams. And that's one of the things that I know that I can do even on those applications. Like anytime that somebody does it, I, I have a whole host of availability of, you know, adding, I call it an emoji, but it's really this sort of this tap back. It's just like a little yeah. extra message on that. So interesting uh, how that's going to go on that. Hey, breaking news here. Uh, the iPhone 15 is uh, pretty popular. <laughs> I like this. I like that. Again, Chance Miller, 9 to 5 Mag. AT&T says iPhone 15 pre-orders were the highest, quote, in many years. So we haven't had Apple... Uh, financials, right? We haven't had a call from Apple Financials to kind of read the tea leaves of, of how good they're doing because they don't really sometimes don't give all the all the numbers. But we have heard from AT and T, and AT and T, based on the numbers from AT and T, they're pretty happy with how many people have uh, purchased the iPhone 15. Yeah, many many years ago, Apple used to actually release numbers for iPhones. They right. would not break it down by model, so we didn't know if the if the Pro was selling better than the non-Pro or anything like that. But they would say the total number of iPhones they had sold, and you would guess when there was a new model that most of right. new sales were probably right. the new ones. And so you could sort of have a sense of you know when people were really interested in buying iPhones. They stopped doing that a few years ago, and so nowadays all we have is just you know f generic phrases like it's been selling better than ever or fantastic numbers or something. Right. Um, but usually like Amazing you say, we quarter. have to wait for we have to wait for <laughs> Apple for that. But now AT&T is you have to assume what AT&T is seeing is probably what, you know, Verizon and T-Mobile and everybody else is seeing. Sure. Too, is, right. uh, and you know, anecdotally this makes sense to me Brett because you know, I don't know, that it's just a small sample size, but like the people that I sort of talk to, I have heard a lot more people talking about buying new iPhones this fall. Agreed. And I don't know Agreed. if it's something about the iPhone 15 or if it's just it's been enough years since the last big iPhone came out or the economy or you name it. But whatever it is, I do have a sense that this is going to be a very uh, a, a good year for Apple in selling iPhones. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, it sounds like AT&T and others will concur with that. Mm -hmm. So that's good. We've talked about smart homes several times before. Um, I am still kind of a holdout. I just haven't like jumped into that whole hog. I kind of live vicariously through you in your smart your smart home. But we've talked also about matter. M-A-T-T-E-R, which is sort of like a standard that a lot of right. companies, including Apple and Google, have come together and said, hey, let's standardize the technology or, you know, it doesn't even require like to be connected to the Internet. In other words, it's just a standard so that all of the smart devices in your home <laughs> now today, even including frid <laughs> fridges and robotic vacuums now can all talk with the same kind of technology. So in other words, it's sort of that same protocol so that, you know, there's not like different uh, versions. Anyway, I know that was a really messy way to explain this. Uh, Jeff, but I know you a lot, know a lot more. And this Verge article actually did help me understand Matter a little bit better. Yeah, it's a great article. I mean, I'm very excited about this Matter standard. I already have a yes. couple devices that support it. And of course, most importantly, Apple HomeKit has initial support for it. And, you know, the, the hope of the matter standard is that we no longer have this world in which some smart home stuff right. works for Amazon and some works for Google and some works for Apple. Right. I want to have right. a world where I can buy any product and it works with all the technology and everything just yeah. talks to each other. Can't we yeah. all just get along and live in harmony? So that's that's the hope of matter. But it's like um, Beatles. And exactly. But the matter and the matter 1.2 standard, which was the one that was just announced this week, it includes a lot of devices that weren't part of the standard in the past. And it's included, okay. you know, you, you jokingly refer to refrigerators. And, and I have to admit, right. is it necessarily to know? I mean, what would you even you wouldn't turn your refrigerator on or off for a remote? I know you wouldn't want to do that. Maybe you could see what the temperature is inside the refrigerator. Yeah, right. Right, I don't right. even know. But um, but something like a robot vacuum or a smart alarm, that's you know, a good one. I have a a, a nest smoke alarm at my house, right? But right. it is proprietary. So like I have to use the Nest app to interfere with it, to interface with it. I can't use um HomeKit for it. Um and some of these other things like you know, laundry machines and air purifiers and room air conditioners. So these are, you know perhaps some of the lesser popular smart home items, but they're still, for some people, things that they really enjoy using. And so let's get them into the matter standard. So, you know, step one is having them in the matter standard. We have that now. Great. Correct. Step right. two is going to be Apple is going to have to say that its version of the home app 
and its version of HomeKit will work with Matter 1.2. Who knows when that's going to happen? I hope it's soon. Right. And then step three is going to be the manufacturer has yes. to say either we have a new version of our device that supports Matter, right. or sometimes what you're seeing, and you've seen this quite a bit, is people can update the firmware of a current device and they can make it support the Matter standard, including Matter 1.2. So, you know, it's a couple steps that have to happen, but step one is to have the standard in the first place. Um and so my hope is that in a couple of years, you know, I will be able to, you know, interface with my smoke alarm and my other, you know, smart devices in my home using uh, the Apple technology. And again, for me, I'm worried about Apple, but if you're an Android user, you know, likewise, you could, with it's an open right. standard, so you could use it too, no matter what you have. So um, it's interesting though, because the first half of this article talks all about all the cool new things about the Matter standard. And then the second half of the article is yes. like, okay, no, here's the real world. We got to wait for everybody to come on board before we can all take advantage of this. Yeah, I feel like the most problematic step of your three mm -hmm. steps is step three, <laughs> mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. we're talking about all of the manufacturers like Whirlpool. They mentioned here Whirlpool, Panasonic, LG, higher. You know, I mean, it's like, can everybody agree that like they want to include this matter mm -hmm. uh, protocol into all their products? I guess I was just thinking it's sort of liken it to like uh, uh, car manufacturers, right? Is everybody yeah. supporting yeah. CarPlay kind of a thing, uh, mm -hmm. even though you want to support the Android side as well? But I, yeah, I don't, I don't know. It just, it, it, it I, I, I feel like it, this is a future that I want to have, <laughs> but, but I don't know how realistic it's going to be. We're going to get there. And again, We're going to get there eventually. I, I, and I, I agree. I agree with you, but I just feel like I know that some people, you know, some manufacturers might try to, you know, go rogue and say, no, we don't want to join this. You know, we, we have something better and you should mm. use our app and our app specifically. And like, we customers don't want that like i don't want yeah. i want a world that you're describing jeff <laughs> i want to live in your smart home basically is what i'm saying <laughs> even get a smart dishwasher i love this i mean to me out of this list of all the things you're mentioning here and the dishwasher i can start is because i can't tell you how many times my wife and i are up in bed and we can't remember did you start the dishwasher i don't know did right. you start it like i just want to check it down there and like you know determine whether it finished anyway that kind of stuff it's it's uh pretty, <laughs> pretty exciting there from smart refrigerators to immersive maps yeah this, this was cool. a yeah so this is google maps right now and i uh -huh. i assume you know, i think actually apple maps when i looked at this jeff it seemed like apple maps has something similar already but maybe not quite to the to the extent that this app advice uh website story is talking about google maps adds a slew of new features but the, really the one they focus on here is immersive view for routes or routes if you will yeah. uh, which i love because i'm always looking at the general map version first right if i want to see directions sometimes i'll jump into the satellite quote view because i want to see like okay does this road go this way or is it a one-way road or you want what building i'm looking for landmarks sometimes but it sounds like that this could even be better this immersive view yeah it's unclear to me if all of the features they're discussing in this article are currently available on the iphone app some of them might yeah. be on the android app oh first, good point but i yeah. guess they're all coming i mean i'll tell you though this is when i was playing around with it google maps is really cool because you know one one aspect of what they're talking about in this article that i tried out last night is let's say that I have, you know, directions. I'm going to be in another town, you know, for a trial or something like that. And so I want to see what, are the, where do I go from the hotel to the yeah. courthouse? That, that's one that yeah. I might use as a lawyer all the time. Right. And so instead of just seeing the overhead, you know, bird's eye view of a map, yes. um, right. which is, you know, somewhat useful, you know what the street names are and stuff like that. With Google, you can actually say, okay, I want to take advantage of this street view technology. And I want you to give me this turn by turn directions. Right. And so right there on my iPhone, I can say, you know, it says at the bottom of the screen, step one is you're going to, you know, go to this corner and take a right on, you know, second yeah. street. And right. so then right there on your phone, you can see the, the entire full screen of your iPhone, yes. this, this intersection of second street. And it, you can have it turned on that as I move my phone around, it, 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 it's as if I'm turning my head yeah, I can see around. And so I can, that's huge. It, and you can do that step by step for every single turn. And so like the place where you merge into the interstate, you can get a sense of what that looks like. And yeah, if there's like a really right. important turn, you can take a time and say, okay, now I can actually see when I get to this turn, I'm going to see this big yellow building right to the left here. Right. And so that, you know, right. and it's great to sort of preview beforehand. So that way when you're driving, and of course, while you're driving, your your car will be telling you you're going to be turning and stuff like that. But if your brain also knows, oh, yeah, this is that turn that I see right. the big yellow building. There it is. Now I know. It. You know, it just it just helps you. So, you know, Google's always been fantastic at this. And th this this feature of immersive routes and, and stuff is yeah. just really, really cool stuff. Really neat. Yeah. 
I feel like some people listening to us would be like, okay, that's great. You know, I've got the list. Like it says, turn right, you know, at Main mm -hmm. Street. But I'm a visual guy a little bit yeah. more, Jeff. And that's the whole thing. It's like, I know we have the list. Like you have, you know, step-by-step -step directions and that's great. Not taking anything away from that. But I'm also like, okay, it says turn right at Main. Wait, is that is that Main coming up? You know, it, I, there's the, I can't see the street sign exactly. And, you know, or maybe it's hidden somehow. It, it, anyway, just having this visual, it, it, mm -hmm. it's, hard to, it, it's hard to understand unless you're looking at some of the pictures here from this, this article. And we'll link to it in the show notes, of course. But it's just really... I, like I welcome that, you know, I still compare, I'm, apparently I'm a multi-map user, uh, app user as well. I still compare Apple Maps and Google Maps. And I got to tell you, as you know, I keep going back to Google Maps. I just feel like they are, it's a little bit more, more reliable for the driving mm -hmm. that I do or the areas that I go, especially when I travel. And I'm just glad to see that they are continuing to improve it uh, uh, with this way. Something that I'm not happy about uh, I am happy about the Google Maps. I'm not happy <laughs> about my Apple One subscription going up in price again. Mm -hmm. And I like this article you linked to from John Gruber, of course, at Daring Fireball. And he goes into some good um, uh, dissections of why. First of all, I love how he noticed that he goes, I would link to this story as a press release from Apple News, but guess what? <laughs> Apple hasn't posted <laughs> the fact that they are raising the prices. It's just, we've got a herd, I guess, from other various sources yeah. that the prices are gonna go up for Apple TV+, Plus, Apple Arcade, Apple News, and then the Apple One subscriptions are gonna go up $5. Um, I kind of agree with John Gruber at the very end here. He goes, okay, $5, I, go, I like it too much. You know, it's worth it. I agree. I think I could have swallowed $2 a little bit easier. Yeah. I mean, there's so many things. I, I think we were even talking about you and I weeks ago that Disney Plus is going up in price and yeah. Netflix is going up in price. Yep. In fact, Netflix prices are going up substantially because Netflix, yes. what they they have found that they actually make more money if you have a lower priced plan that has ads built in. And so, you know, they would rather you have a cheaper plan with ads, but I don't want ads when I have streaming Netflix movies. Right. That, you know, that gets in the way. And so right, I'm going right. to always pay more, but now that's going to be more expensive. And so, I mean, and I know this is the world that we live in today. Things are more expensive groceries are more expensive i mean everything is getting more expensive but streaming services you know it, it's like once a couple of them do it i think the rest yeah, of them are every, like you know yeah. we can do it too and, and i'm talking about streaming video but as you say it's not just the streaming video apple tv plus it's also apple news it's it's all the apple one it's all it's all the apple services right so everything is just getting more expensive and i uh, guess yeah, my, my curmudgeon angle on this jeff is like okay disney's going up netflix is going up apple come on First of all, <laughs> I, I think you can afford it. And second of all, if you don't go up, you could have leveraged that a little bit to maybe mm -hmm. grab some additional uh, subscribers to that, I right? Agree. I mean, the yeah. fact Would've that it's, I, I don't know, it just, advantage. Yeah. that's mm -hmm. what I'm saying. I just like, I would, and one other thing quickly I wanted to ask, is this right? Somewhere in here, John Gruber says that Apple TV debuted four years ago, to Apple TV Plus, sorry, the, mm -hmm. the subscription. Is that four years ago? Because he says in here, that it has doubled in price in just the four years. Is that does that sound right? Is that correct? I try to find well, where he says when that. When it first here. started, it was four ninety nine. I remember that. And so right, whatever, right. Yeah, so maybe so. Um, and that must have been yeah. about four or five years ago. And Although, now that's a yeah. bad comparison from my mind because when they started, okay, okay. you know, you had like what six different shows on it. <laughs> so whereas nowadays, good point, very good point. Shows. So from that yeah. standpoint, you get a heck of a lot more now than you did at the very beginning. So that that I don't yeah. think is, but I guess I guess that is another way to look at it is that the price of the service has has doubled. So I, I I'm willing just to keep it on until Napoleon comes out. Have Have you seen that trailer for the Napoleon movie? Yeah, Napoleon isn't that coming on Apple like TV? Good. And that other one, the uh, <laughs> The, the Leonardo DiCaprio one, the, the oh, uh, flowers, flower, of the flower killers of the, yeah, you know, killer moon or flowers, is, yeah, the, and, uh, killers Scorsese. of the flower moon, one of those. The one, the one that's in the theaters right now, and people are saying it's getting a lot of Oscar buzz. I mean, it would be interesting if Apple got the Oscar for Coda what a year or so ago. Yes, and then right, they once right, again right. Get an an Oscar because of this. It's like you know, Apple, so you see there that that's why it's worth the price increase. It's Oscar winning. Things I, I guess, there, so and again, there, so. you know. 
it, it's a it's a pill that I'm willing to swallow right now. Just so that people know, and I'll link to this. If you have just Apple TV Plus, it is now currently six ninety nine a month, but it's going up to nine ninety nine a month. Yeah. And then Apple News is nine ninety nine a month. It's going to go up to twelve ninety nine per month. And then if you want the all big Apple One bundle, the premier Apple One bundle, we are currently paying thirty two ninety five per month. Which I remember when I started, uh, maybe about a year and a half ago, Jeff. It was only like twenty nine dollars. Yeah, month, it was thirty. It started at thirty bucks. Now it's 33 yes. and it's going up to 38 and you know over a yeah. relatively short period mm. of time going yeah. from 30 to 38 i mean again eight dollars but it's eight dollars every month and it adds up and it's everything else i know uh, yeah. okay yeah. i'll uh i'll just grip my teeth on that how about some see-through usb-c Wasn't i this one fun? love this <laughs> i love this it, let, me, let me just tell you the a little adventure i had this week so i had uh, i got the iphone 15 pro right about maybe a week and a half ago love it iphone 15 pro of course has usb-c for charging i just got a rental car the rental car has carplay but only wired carplay which means that the rental car only had usb a connector in mm -hmm. the little console <laughs> so i have plenty of usb a to lightning cables jeff but i don't have usb a to USB C. Yeah, Does that make I sense? have to buy one of those for my car. I, yeah, okay, thing. well, yeah. actually, I, I'll take that quickly back. I had one cable that was USB A to USB C. And it's in your and car. <laughs> I, well, no, no, I went and plugged it in, Jeff. This is what we're talking uh, about. You and I have had this. Uh -huh. I went and plugged it into my rental car and it didn't work. Oh, it didn't right, charge. Right, 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 right. And yeah. it didn't actually even connect with CarPlay. And so I'm thinking to myself, you know what? This is disappointing. First of all, I thought the rental car didn't have CarPlay and I was getting ready to like drive right back to the rental car place. Mm -hmm. Second, I'm like, okay, it, does it just not work? Is it like the rental car is not that old? I mean, what's going on? And my son, God bless him, <laughs> he was like, dad, I think this works. So he has a, a 12, an iPhone 12. He has USB-A to lightning cable. He went into the car, plugged it in and guess what? It worked. So I'm like, yeah okay come on now what's going on so i ended up going of all places this is something i did that we talk about to an office max so like office supply store mm -hmm. and i'm standing there struggling jeff whether i should get like a 25 dollars cord <laughs> from belkin or i think it was a 9.99 cord from a company i think it's ativa or you know it's one of these like knockoff type of i mean nothing maybe ativa is great i don't know but it was obviously not like an anchor or belkin or something that i know i ended up going with a cheaper version and it works great. So it was a oh, USB A to USB C. So I was lucky, but this just continues to frustrate me, Jeff. That yeah. like how do I, how was I to know? Because I'm, I'm I'm sitting there talking to the cashier, and I'm like, you know, I might see you in about thirty five seconds because <laughs> I'm going to go out <laughs> to my car. I'm going to try this, and if it doesn't work, I'm going to come in and replace it for the twenty five dollar one. So yeah, anyway, yeah. that was just a big lead up to this the article, which I thought was fantastic that you linked to from Luma Field. It is they they've actually what what is the CT scans of USB C cables even with Adam Savage, uh, which is just actually right. wonderful. And like you said, you get what you pay for. Yeah. The, when, when you look at sort of the x-ray CAT scans here, you can actually see into the little plug area. Yeah. Um, and you can see how some of them are, I mean, even with my own eyes, and I don't know electronics, <laughs> but I can see that some of these are very simplistic and others yeah. are very sophisticated. And the reality yeah. is, is these plugs especially the Thunderbolt ones. I mean, it basically is a little miniature computer inside of a cable. You don't think of it that way. That's amazing. You think of it as just being a cable, but the yeah. things that it's doing to make it work, there really is a chip in there and everything else is very sophisticated. But you wonder why, you know, why does Apple have a USB-C? And to be fair, it's not just USB-C, it's USB-C and Thunderbolt yeah, 4. Right. But right. why would they sell a cable for $130 when you can walk <laughs> into the store and buy one for 10 bucks, like you just said? For 9 dollars right. And this is the reason why, is because there is a a lot more going in there. Now, the problem, though, is that consumers don't know all the time, do I need to spend? I mean, the dilemma that you faced at the store I was know. the perfect one. Did you have right. to spend more on the Belkin one or did you less on the no-name one? There is no way to know. Sometimes, mm, sometimes yeah. you can look at the box and it will say that it's a power cable as opposed to a data cable. And because the cheapest one is the power only. And so... If you just right, see that right. it doesn't say data, then you're like, okay, well, maybe this one's going to be too cheap. But I have heard people say that they purchased a USB-C cable that says it's for data, 
and it still doesn't work for card play mm. whereas a more expensive one might so right. it's 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 a t- it's a rough world out there I, I feel like we say this every week i love that apple's using the standard i just wish exactly. the standard was better what they really yeah. should have done is yeah. part of the usb standard should be that at the very end of the cord you need to put on here some little indicator of you know this is this is rated number 1 or this is rated number 4 so that people could look at it and say this one is less expensive, but it does less. This one's more expensive. But instead, they just see a bunch of cables that all you say USB-C, and there's just right. no way to know what it's going to work with. You're right. And because we've talked about this, I looked like at the very, 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 very fine print <laughs> on these boxes that I was looking at, Jeff. And some of them were talking about data transfers. And then, of course, you know, um, I love the marketing people, but sometimes when marketing people get involved, it's like they come up with these terms, you know, that just really uh, uh, confuse even more like, you know, high speed cable, but they don't yeah, mention data, right? It's, it's I marketing. know that's what yeah. I'm saying. And anyway, I'll link to this story because I didn't watch this entire video with Adam Savage, but he had the people from Luma Field on and just the very beginning of this, when they're talking about the Apple's $130 USB-C cable, they, just like what you said, and you can see it right here at the very top of the story. Mm-hmm. There's a whole chip. The computer chip is right there. And I, I liked how Adam Savage says, for years we've been saying that the iPhone has more electronics than the Apollo lander, right? Right, <laughs> and right. It, it's like it has more <laughs> computing power than the Apollo lander. And he says, this $130 USB-C cable from Apple might now actually have more <laughs> computer power in it than the Apollo lander. I mean, it really is amazing uh, what what they're doing there. Where you at segment? Hey, we haven't we haven't talked about a where you at segment in a while. Mm-hmm. Just one story here, which I thought was fantastic. Apparently, a gentleman uh, from Los Angeles was in Austin, Texas. He went and took a little bit of a uh, dip into Lake Travis, which is a popular lake for boating and everything. Unfortunately, he had an Apple Watch ultra on his wrist that came off somehow it slipped off and it went to the bottom of the lake and you know he tried to get it back yeah he even he even hired a scuba diver right uh but they could not recover it until you take over jeff well i mean i was gonna actually defer to you because as you know brett because you own an apple watch ultra yes. when you buy it you have a choice of some of those special bands, right? And one of them, right. I don't think it's the one that you got, but one of them that Apple sells is the scuba diving band, which right. is made for going into deep water. It's incredibly That's right. secure. But this gentleman was not using that band. He was using right. just maybe just a regular sort of you know a rubber band. Maybe it was the right. it was the solo or whichever one it was. And as a result, when he was underwater, the watch slipped off, which I can totally see happening. Um, and he and when it happened, he knew it happened. He knew exactly where it went. Right. Down. He says he even dropped a marker, or whatever you know. Yeah, he said sort of, a marker, right? Yeah, something to mark the spot so he could get it, but couldn't <laughs> find it. Um, but the miraculous part of the story is that three months later, somebody else found it, and because that he had used his Find My app to put it in yeah. lost mode, once somebody recovered it and plugged it in, you know, when it came back to life, it said this belongs to so and so. You know, right. call this number to return it, and he was able to get it back. So it's a it's a great. I mean, the idea that after being what was it three months at the bottom of a lake and it still works, incredible. That's, Right. Pretty impressive for a watch. Pretty impressive. I'm, That's the yeah. Ultra. Do you think that if it had not been the Ultra, it would still work? I don't know. I don't but, know. Uh, I don't know. I mean, they 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 really push this. So right here, you can say the Apple Watch Ultra, um, it has water resistance, right? Not waterproof, water resistance to a depth of 100 meters. So I'm not really sure how far down he was. He was 30 feet down when he lost it, but I don't know how far down it it went. went Maybe it says somewhere. Yeah, it went further down there. But three months, it stayed there. And like you said, he was able to put it in lost mode because of the Find My app, just like you said, so that when somebody found it, when they did actually find it, they plugged it in, it charged up, and sure enough, it had the message. <laughs> and apparently, he must have gotten pinged on his Find My app that yeah, it was yeah. actually found, and it was actually to recover. Uh, he just says, it's a testament to Apple's engineering. And I mean, because he said, <laughs> it's been working perfectly ever since that he got it, <laughs> that he got it back. That's really just, uh, that's, that's, that's pretty amazing. We want to say thank you to our sponsor, Lit Software. So we talked about this a little bit uh, last week because you and I have known the developers of Lit Software for many, many years. In fact, you have written about them on iPhone JD quite often, Jeff. Uh, Just last week, I believe, you wrote an article about their Transcript Pad app that will synchronize video with text now, which is pretty incredible. 
So yeah. Lit and, software, and that way, that's my favorite yeah, app. Yeah. I mean, they have so many other ones too. They've got the trial pad app exactly. that you use to present evidence at trial and doc review pad, which is great for dealing with a bunch of documents. So, I mean, there's lots and lots of tools that lawyers can use. Yeah. Absolutely. And that's the, and that's the whole thing about it is that it, it, it's pretty amazing what they have come up with, because I remember in the very beginning, I mean, just like you said, in 2010, when the app, when the iPad came out, we know the developer Ian and Tara that um, they knew that the iPad was going to be a tool that probably a lot of litigators and attorneys even uh, would use. But it's not just that. I mean, obviously, for students and medical devices, I mean, there's so much potential that was there. They started developing right away. It just so happened that Ian and Tara were focused on sort of the trial aspect of it. They were trial uh, consultants. And so TrialPad is an app that is for giving presentations where you can do call outs and things on documents. Transcript Pad is for transcripts, which is something that we usually get in, you know, when we go to depositions for witnesses right. or when we go to court hearings. Doc Review Pad is for basically reviewing several documents in a collection and then tagging them, whether they're responsive or not. Uh, they also have Exhibits Pad, which I got to tell you, I haven't used a whole lot but it just came up the other week when somebody was asking about an easy way that they could take a couple of, of ipads to with them to a deposition and instead of handing like you know a massive three ring binder of paper to the witness they wanted to be able to lock down an ipad and hand it to exactly. uh, the witness for those documents and the exhibits pad app is great for doing that That's and exactly then they also does, mentioned yeah. They also mention on here uh, another uh, app that we have been <laughs> very much expecting, Timeline Pad, which would do timelines, uh, but it hasn't been released yet. What we would like to talk about quickly today is that, you know, if you are interested as an individual to go and get these apps, um, you are welcome to go to the App Store, just like for any other app, and you can mm -hmm. download any one of these apps, Trial Pad or Transcript Pad or Doc Review Pad, and you actually get a seven day trial. Uh, it's great because it's fully open, fully unlocked, and you can go through and try it out for a few days, make sure that it works for you and your firm or whatever the scenario is gonna be. And then right there in the app, you can, uh, uh, purchase a subscription. So it's an annual subscription price of $399, which I know sounds like a lot, but I have actually talked with them many times and you have too about the fact that it really supports them tremendously in being able to offer all of these additional apps and all of the improvements. And you and I watched this, you wrote about it last week and the fact that they can do the video sync with transcript pad in there. And that's only because they are supported by this annual subscription. So yeah, you could you, go right, in somebody and, at my yeah, firm that's yeah. buying uh, legal software all the time. I mean, right. this, is very, this is very inexpensive for legal software, but anyway, go ahead. Exactly, exactly. Well, so one of the things that they, they came up with, speaking of your firm, just because it's large, you know, there are some firms that have two attorneys and maybe each attorney just goes and gets their own uh, uh, you know, personal version on their own iPad with their own Apple ID or their iCloud account, right? Because typically when you go to the app store, you're connecting and purchasing it with your own Apple ID. But larger firms, or just because I we know Ian and Tara, there are many companies or corporations or, you know, in-house counsel departments that are using the same apps and they don't wanna just have each individual <laughs> purchase their own version of the app. So they know that these companies want an enterprise program. And so that's what Lit Software released, uh, maybe, I don't know, a little over a year ago, maybe a couple of years ago, to where large companies, large firms, that they wanna purchase multiple uh, versions of the, or multiple subscriptions for their individuals, they can go through the enterprise program. You have to actually uh, purchase, if you got 10 or more, that's when this kicks in for this enterprise program. And I know that a lot of people do many, many more than that. Uh, sometimes even you know several dozen uh, subscriptions. But the great thing about this, number one, is that a law firm like yours, Jeff, or others that I've worked with, they can purchase, say, you know, 20 subscriptions, right? And then the way that Lit Software has done this, they can assign those subscriptions to individual iPads without the actual individual having to use their own personal Apple ID. I hope that makes sense on there. It's just a great way because then, let's say if somebody leaves the firm and they want to, or they need to reassign that subscription to another iPad or another mm -hmm. individual, they can do that easily. Now that takes just a little bit of, of 
of coordination to make sure that you've got this list and you know which Apple ID is assigned to. Or I've even even gone into firms, Jeff, where sometimes that there may be five or six firm owned iPads, right? That anybody can use, right? So it's not necessarily tied to a single actual individual or an attorney or so. And you can use these enterprise subscriptions for those as well. Sometimes it, you can just like, if you're going to trial or going to a presentation, you can take these iPads and they are firm owned. So anyway, the enterprise program just basically allows a law firm or a company or an organization of some kind to manage multiple subscriptions that can be assigned to iPads or reassigned to different iPads uh, at any time that, th that they need. You can sign up for a year, you can sign up for multiple years, like either two years or three years at a time. And if you pay up front, you get a huge discount on that first year. So you can reach out to them. I, I'm going to include the, the page in the uh, show notes there. And you can get uh, a little bit of a proposal if you wanted to get some more specifics on that. But just a really neat option for um, – uh, companies that want multiple subscriptions. Again, this was a pro this was a, a big problem that I think Lit Software has solved very well because there have been a lot of companies that say we don't want you know in Jeff Richardson and Brett Bernie to buy their own individual you know with their own iCloud. And frankly, sometimes Jeff, like you know, some attorneys don't want to pay their own money <laughs> for mm -hmm. software that they're using for the firm. And so yeah. this is a fantastic workaround from an enterprise program that Lit you can get from Lit Software. The last thing I would add is that you don't have to be a huge organization for this to make sense because true, even if you're true. a small law firm, you know, if you've got what, like six attorneys that want to use it, maybe three paralegals and maybe one more account exactly. that you can have to assign or just to assign to a, a regular firm iPad, exactly. that people, you know, you can easily get to that 10 number without being a huge organization. So it's, yeah. a, it's a great program that they have. And by the way, every subscription includes access to every app that they do. Yeah. So these are individual subscriptions. So it's like every iPad then that gets this as part of the enterprise program gets access to all the apps. So it's not like you're, you're, you know, uh, getting short shrifted or anything from all, all those aspects. Uh, so anyway, I'll link to it. And uh, we just want to say thanks to Lit Software for uh, sponsoring us. We are big fans of all of these apps. We can certainly go into, you want to, you want to know some details about any of these apps. I do a lot of training on these apps. Jeff uses them on a, uh, almost on a daily basis and we can certainly answer a lot more questions. So thank you Lit Software for sponsoring us today. In the know. In the know. So here's what I call the confusing press dance with my AirPods Pro, <laughs> Jeff. Um, with the iOS 17 release, something that we knew was coming with the AirPods Pro was they were going to change some of the physical interactions with the AirPods Pro, right? Mm -hmm. Not that big of a deal, except that I found myself now, muscle memory has been uh get, getting myself confused a little bit so for example if i needed to answer a phone call and i had my airpods pro in i would just click the airpods pro and it would answer the phone call right if i needed to hang up and i it, on on a phone call i could just click or press my airpods pro once to hang up now with ios 17 what they did they changed this so that now you can still answer a call <laughs> by pressing once on your airpods pro but then while you're on a phone call, you if you press it once, it doesn't hang up the call, it mutes the phone call. Right. <laughs> and then you can press it again to unmute the phone call. But then now if you wanna hang up a phone call <laughs> with your AirPods Pro, you have to double press or press twice on your AirPods Pro to actually hang up the call. Does that, does that make sense? Yep. So it just is confusing to me. And I was going in and looking I don't know if I can do this now because my, my AirPods aren't connected to my iPhone, but you can go in and you can change this around. So if you wanted to change it, so you can still press once to answer the phone call. And then you can go in and say, you know what? I want to press once to end the phone call. But if you say press once to end the phone call now to mute yourself, you have to press twice. Like if you go into the settings, it will automatically change that for you. <laughs> But I kind of do like the press once to mute. It's just that now I have to remember, no, pressing once now doesn't hang up the phone call. <laughs> I have to press twice to hang up the phone call. So my, my tip is 
when you've got your AirPods Pro connected to your iPhone and you're on iOS 17, just go into your settings and at the very top there, you can see once you're connected, you'll see that it'll say your AirPods right there. You can tap on that and you can just go down and there are three of the options there. You can change whether you want to press once or twice to answer the phone call, once or twice to mute, uh, but it's not going to let you you know, it's not going to be confused. If you choose press once to hang up, then you're going to have to press twice for mute. If you press once for mute, you're going to have to press twice to hang up <laughs> the call. So yeah. just go in and take a look at that. Just familiarize yourself with that so that you're not confused as much as I am with my AirPods press dance is what I call yeah. it now. It's a good tip, but it's also a good just sort of public service announcement of, you know, how they, they work a little differently. I think it makes more sense because it makes more sense that you, it don't, does. Want to, Agreed. you don't want to click your AirPods and accidentally hang up your phone call. Doing a double click is a more intentional action, and I think right. that that's better. But it's nice to know that they have that change. Good tip. So my tip is something I did not expect to be talking about just a week after last week. Do you remember last week okay. we were talking about this post by Stephen Hackett on 512 Pixels where – this is the part you're going to remember, Brett. His wife was dressed like a hot dog. That part you yes, remember, Yes, I do. Right? I okay. got that. And the, All right. The prob- the, you got that in your head. And the problem yes, that we talked about last week was that when you want to take someone's picture and put it on your the front of your iPhone, um, you will often want to make it so that you don't want like the time if it's your wallpaper right. or if it's the contact picture, their name, you don't want it over the top of their head. So you want to sort of push them down a little bit, push push their face down. But the problem is there might not be space to do that in the picture. So the tip that Stephen right. Hackett offered was using generative AI, like Photoshop, yeah. to right, actually right. build extra trees and sky and stuff like that. And I thought that was a pretty clever tip. And then 17.1 comes out this week and Apple has their own solution. And their solution oh. is very elegant. So what their okay. solution is, is if you are creating wallpaper in the this. front of your iPhone, right. or if you're assigning a picture to a contact, like let's say I wanted to, you know, say anytime that, you know, Brett Bernie calls me, it's going to have this picture on it. I can use a picture. And then if I want to sort of, you know, take your face and move it down a little bit on the screen so that at the top where it has your name, it's not covered up. I can just pinch, you know, when you pinch a picture, it makes it smaller. Oh. And in 17.1, what Apple will do is the place where your picture ends, it will do sort of this blur effect. It sort of, it takes the the colors in the picture and sort of gradually does this Gaussian blur to like a blur. But it basically, it's a very, it's, it's you know, it's not like the generative AI that's that's creating trees and creating blue sky, but it's just this very subtle fade into a, a sort of a blur effect. And it works really, really well. And I have gone back and people that I have assigned a picture to their contact, um, right. but the picture, it was, a, it was a close up of their face. And so it's really wide and stuff like that. I have gone back and I have pinched, uh, you know, just to make the, their face a little bit smaller and it, it's, it's a much better contact photo. So, you know, it doesn't use, and probably has some artificial intelligence of some type, but it's not, like I said, it's not like the generative AI creating trees where a tree doesn't really exist or creating blue sky. Right. It's just doing this fade. So I had no idea that this was even a feature. If I had known that this was going to be in 17.1, I would have <laughs> you know, waited last week to say, let's talk about two different solutions to the same problem, but little did I know. So it, it, it's just, that's an Apple solution because it's so obvious. You, you, you pick your picture, Picture, you pinch it if you little if you need to just to make it smaller. Apple takes care of filling in that extra space in a way that makes perfect sense, and um, I, I just think it's really impressive. So, okay, okay. So how do I get there now? So I'm okay. creating a new wallpaper. Is that right? So you can Is do it. Yeah. I, so you can do it okay. through wallpaper, or you can okay. do it through assigning contact. But when you get to the point uh, okay. where you pick a picture, so there's yeah. a point where you say, you know, select a photo from your photo album. Just yeah, choose that. any photo, and then once you have chosen your photo. Um, by default, the photo is going to be, you know, from the top of the screen to the bottom of the screen. Right. So then just use your fingers to pinch a little bit. And as you make the photo <gasps> smaller, oh, you see how it puts at the top and or bottom yeah. wherever it needs to be. It just fills it in. And so it's basically expanding the canvas of your photo what? so that you can move it around wherever you want to put it. It's really, really cool. That's amazing. Oh, my goodness. Thank you. Okay. This is now going to cost me a lot of time today. <laughs> as, I, as I as I go through and try that out. Wow. And that's just built in. So I did not that's something so I did once, not know. Yeah, wow. neither did I. So once you update and, and I guess people that have been using the beta, maybe they knew about this, but I just hadn't seen it reported. And then once 17.1 comes out, there it is. So um when you update your phone this beautiful. week, if you haven't done so yet, you can take yeah. advantage of this new feature. Fantastic. That is great. Woof. Okay, lots of surprises. We'll have a lot lots to talk about next week as well. Uh, we'll uh, I'm sure you and I will be texting Monday evening <laughs> at approximately 8 p.m. Eastern, 7 p.m. Central. On the, 
We want to thank our sponsor, Lit Software, again. Thanks for being a part of this. And Jeff, we will talk with you. Well, I'll talk with you next Monday, but we'll talk with everyone else <laughs> next next week, next Friday. <laughs> Sounds good. Thanks, Brett. Bye-bye, everybody.